Today we're gonna to go ahead and continue with our Activity 1.3, the Germ Guide app. And we're gonna go ahead and continue with building one of our additional screens, which is going to be the diseases associated with crowding. Now, during our last session, we went ahead and played around with our user interface on our home screen, as well as programming both the UI and the blocks on our water screen. So now as we move forward with our crowding screen, one of the things we're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is that a lot of the properties on the UI is gonna be very similar on the actual crowding screen as well. So we're gonna be going back and forth from the water screen to the crowding screen to check on some of those properties that we've already set. So before we jump into the crowding screen, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make sure we connect our MIT App Inventor to our App Companion app. So once you have them both pulled up, we're gonna to need to go up to the top of our screen and select connect, and then we're gonna go ahead and select Chromebook. Now that'll go ahead and pass the code from MIT App Inventor into our MIT App Companion. Now, once that loads, we should be able to see our waterborne screen and everything that we've done with it. So the next thing we're gonna look at doing is looking at some of the properties. The first thing is our back button. So we did change some of our properties on our back button and we can double check that by clicking on it and checking on all those properties on the right hand side. Once you have those properties set, we're gonna go ahead to our water screen at the top and select the crowding screen. From here, we're gonna make some minor modifications to the screen before we get to our back button. The first thing is we're gonna wanna go ahead and check the title visible and uncheck that. And then the second thing we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do is select the background color and let's go ahead and set that to black. Now, once we have that done, the next step is gonna to be to program this back button so that the properties match. And some of the things that we did was we've changed the font to be bold. We left the font size alone. The font typeface we set to mono. And then we went ahead down and changed our shape to more of a rounded. And last but not least, we went ahead and changed the text color so that it matched that cyan. Now that you have your back button set, the next step is going to be to add the title label. So in our actual water screen, we have this label that's brought in. And with that label, we went ahead and changed those properties so that it fits. The problem with our next screen is that our title is going to be a little bit longer. So we're gonna go ahead and add our label and then we're gonna show you how to go ahead and add a horizontal arrangement so that we can center that label on the screen. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do is go back to that crowding screen. Once we're in that crowding screen, we're gonna go ahead and drag that label in and we're gonna go ahead and rename that from label one and we're just gonna call this crowding label. Now, once you go ahead and give that its name, go ahead and select okay. And from there, we can go and play around with some of these properties. So some of the things that we did is we changed the font to bold. We went ahead and changed that font size to 30. So we can go ahead and change that. The font typeface was set to mono. We went ahead and changed the text as well as the actual text color. So let's go ahead and change that text color to white. And let's go ahead and center our alignment here. So once we go ahead and center that within the actual height and width arrangement. Now for our actual text, what we're gonna have here is diseases associated with crowding. And as mentioned, this is a little bit of a larger title. So we're gonna see that kind of go across that screen. Doesn't look too bad, but we may need to modify that just a little bit. I'd like to see this set more on two lines rather than three. And if we want to go ahead and do that, we could simply play with that font size. Let's drop that down to about 26. See what that does for us. As you can see, kind of runs across that screen now. And again, if we go ahead and expand that a little bit, we can kind of see what it's doing. So once we go back, it's something that may look good for you or you may wanna go ahead and change that. Right now, that doesn't look too bad. I think we can deal with that. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave that with that font set to 26. So let's go back and double check to make sure in our water screen we have everything matched up. The only thing that's really different here is we changed our width so that it would fill the parent as well as our font size. So now that our crowding screen looks okay, 
we can go back and change that width if we want to a fill parent. It's not gonna really affect much of the outcome of the way it looks, but we do want that arrangement to take up the entire width of the screen. The next step is we're gonna go ahead and add some spacers here. So if we look at our water screen, what we're gonna see is that we've added a horizontal arrangement with a height of 5%. And then we went ahead and added a vertical arrangement that had two buttons in it. So let's go back and take a look at that crowding screen. We'll go ahead to our layout and we're gonna drop in a horizontal arrangement and make sure that that goes underneath your diseases associated with crowding label. And from there, we're just gonna go ahead and give that a height of 5%. Now, once we do that, we can select OK. And as you can see, we do have this arrangement in MIT App Inventor. You can see that it's kind of overlapping and that's mainly because our text is going over two lines. So let's see what happens if we drop that vertical arrangement in below. Now that we have our vertical arrangement, we're gonna go ahead and take that vertical arrangement and set its properties to the same that's on the water screen. So my vertical arrangement here has a line of center. The background is default. We have a height of fill parent and a width of fill parent. So on the crowding screen, we're gonna wanna make sure that we do the same exact thing. A line center, and then my height will be fill parent. Remember that will take up the entire height of the screen and the fill parent of the width will take up the width of the screen. Now that we have our vertical arrangement set, we're ready to go and add those two buttons. So let's go take a look at that water screen and let's take a look at what we've done with the actual buttons. Here we have a button which called cholera. We went ahead and made that bold and we changed the font to 36 and we have a lot of properties we have to look at. So before we get into the properties, let's just go and create those two buttons and then from there, we can go and add a horizontal arrangement of 5%. So back into the crowding screen, we'll go ahead and go back to my user interface. We're gonna drag our first button in and we're gonna go ahead and rename that button while we're here. And we're gonna call this the measles button. And we'll select okay. And then we'll go ahead and drop that horizontal arrangement under layout make sure it goes under that text for button the height is going to be set to five percent and we'll go ahead and drop another button under user interface under the horizontal arrangement and we'll go ahead and rename that one and we're going to call this one meningitis now once you have that one set the next step here is to go and change those properties so in order to change those properties, we're gonna go back again to that water screen and we can look at what those buttons actually look like. So here we've went ahead and made our font bold and a font size of 36. And then we went and changed the typeface as well as the height and width of the actual button itself. So let's go back into that crowding screen. We'll go back to the first button, which is my measles button. We're gonna bold it make the font size 36. We went ahead and changed the typeface to mono. The height was set to 90 pixels. And we went ahead and changed that button image so that it would match the button image PNG file. Now that we have that, the next step is to go and take a look at some of the text and things down below. So let's go back to that water screen. You'll notice that we have that button image now. And with that button image, we have a shape left to default. We changed the text, we made sure it was aligned. And then from there, we left the text color as default. So now we should be good to finish up this button. And we're gonna do that by going in and changing where it says text for button one. Let's set that to measles. Now that we have that set to measles, we can go ahead and click off and we should see our measles button show up on the screen. We're gonna to wanna to go ahead and repeat the same steps for the button below. Make it bold. Font size should be set to 36. We're gonna change the typeface to mono. The height is gonna be set to 90 pixels. We'll change the image to the button PNG. And then from there, we're gonna change what it says to meningitis. 
and then we can go ahead and click off and now you have your second button. So at this point, we pretty much have our user interface completed. The only other things we need to bring in is our players. So we're gonna need to bring in two additional players like we did for our cholera and our e-tech. Remember that these are non-visible components, so we're not gonna actually see them on the user interface. So back into that crowding screen, we're gonna go ahead and find my player under media. We'll drag in player one, drag in player two, and remember, important is to go and make sure we name these. So we're gonna go ahead and rename this and we're gonna go ahead and call this our measles player. And then we can go ahead and call our next one player two, meningitis player. Now, last but not least, before we leave our actual designer view here is we need to make sure that our source is set to match the player. So in this case, my meningitis player is gonna be playing the meningitis MP3. And my measles player is gonna be going ahead and playing the measles MP3. Now that those are set, we're ready to move on to our block view. Now, once you're in your block view, again, we have this back pressed. We also have our actual back button. Now we do have this little backpack up here and this is very handy when working on screens with duplicate code. So I'm gonna go ahead over to the water screen so we can see the programming that we've already done. In this case, we selected when the cholera button was clicked, we call the cholera player to start and the same thing with the e-tech. Now I can take one of these blocks and drop it in this backpack. And you'll see that it's now telling me something's in there. When I go over to my crowding screen, I can open that backpack and what I dropped in there is already saved. If I pull this out, I can actually use that bit of code to help me program this actual screen. Now what you're gonna notice is I have two red X's and the reason for that is because it's looking for this cholera button, but because we're on the crowding screen, there is no such event handler or such button. What we can use this for though, is we can use that drop down button and select the measles button so that when we select the measles button, we want the measles player to play. We can then go ahead and right click and duplicate that block. Again, you'll notice we're gonna get an error because we have two of the same event handlers, which we can't have, but we can go ahead and change that measles over to meningitis. So now when the meningitis button is clicked, we're gonna get the meningitis player to play. So now that we have that done, our programming for our second screen, the crowding screen is complete, and we can go ahead and give this a test by selecting your buttons and seeing how they actually work. Measles is a highly contagious respiratory infection caused by a virus. With measles, you can have a total body skin rash, flu-like symptoms, and high fever. There's no specific treatment for measles other than drinking plenty of fluids and getting lots of rest. And once those buttons are working correctly, we'll be ready to move on to our last and final screen.